Hi, and welcome to cells part four. We're moving now on to the organelles. What the organelles are the little organs that are performing all those functions necessary for everything to, to work in the cell, for all the proteins to be manufactured, for all mechanisms of the cell. So let's look inside. This is, again, Joe's cell. And um, what we want to look is inside now. So the first structure or organelle that I want to look at is called the endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum in this drawing is shown like this network. And um, this network of what? It looks like just a netting uh, actually is full of ribosomes or not. So you have this area that's full of the dotted ribosomes and another area that's not that way. So in the not that way, it's called smooth. It's called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And the part that has all the little dots, this is the rough endoplasmic reticulum uh, that has all the ribosomes. Those little dots are all the ribosomes. So um, what we want to look at is the function always of these organs. So you want to learn what it is, you know, what it looks like and what the function is. So this is scattered throughout the cytoplasm and it is the location of protein synthesis. So all proteins that are manufactured in your cell, which are hundreds, hundreds of proteins, are going to be manufactured here within the ribosomes, within this region called the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so proteins here, and we're going to put a big P for proteins. And then what happens in this smooth area, smooth endoplasmic reticulum? And uh, that is the region where it synthesizes lipids, so fats and steroids. The other function, other than of synthesis, it's a detoxifier. So uh, you would imagine then that the liver is full of these because it's detoxifying alcohol and any other drug that's entering into the body. So even if it's an Advil that needs to be broken down over a period of six hours, this is going to be happening in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. You also imagine that in the event that um, an individual needs more of these regions to detoxify, then it's going to proliferate. So in an individual that consumes a lot of alcohol, it is going to induce the proliferation of smooth ER. So they would have a greater number of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, a greater network of this reticulum. The liver, of course, as I said, is packed with it. And uh, when you think of to tolerance to alcohol and to drugs, uh, the reason an individual becomes very tolerant to drugs and alcohol, it's because you manufacture more of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. They become more efficient at detoxifying, and therefore that drug at a certain dosage no longer has the same effect. And that's what tolerance is. So that individual then will up the dose uh, of, let's say, alcohol, and then you manufacture more. And it's this vicious cycle of pushing the liver into a a very uh, difficult function. Okay, let's move on then to the mitochondria. And this is what a mitochondria looks like. Uh, it looks like an oval structure with these inner walls inside. So those walls are not called walls, they're called Christi. And everything in between those Christi is called a matrix. And those walls are important because they're loaded with enzymes. Okay, let's see what it all does. We call this usually the powerhouse of the cell. This is where we manufacture ATP. So this is ATP is the molecule that's going to allow you to function, to do work of any sort in the body. So you must be making this molecule all the time and it's being made in the mitochondria. So let's think again, a muscle is going to have a lot of mitochondria if it wants to exercise, if it wants to be a well-functioning muscle. So the muscle of an athlete is going to have more mitochondria 
than the muscle of a couch potato, right? Does that make sense? Um, this double walled region, just describing again the anatomy of it, has Christy and matrix. Christy again is the walls, and the matrix is everything else in between. I wanted to show you a little bit in case you're not familiar with a molecule of ATP. And a molecule of ATP looks like this. It is not something you're going to memorize, but I want you to know the big the overall view of what it looks like. It has an adenine molecule. It has a ribose, which is a sugar. The adenine is called a nitrogenous base because it has all this nitrogen in it. See? Nitrogen, nitrogen. So it's a nitrogenous base plus a sugar. And then it has three phosphates. Phosphate number one, phosphate number two, phosphate number three. So a phosphate is molecule of phosphorus plus oxygen, 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 oxygen. So you have these phosphates here. Okay? And you have three of them. And this is potential energy. This is how it stores that energy. And when you need to do work or move a muscle or have a thought, you're going to need to release this last phosphate. And off it goes. And you're going to utilize that for that particular function. And whereas you started out with adenosine triphosphate, you're going to end up with adenosine diphosphate because only two are left behind and you would need to add on another phosphate and wait until it's needed in the body and release that phosphate in as a form of energy i put the the bill there the five dollar bill because it's it's considered your cell currency it's what you use to do work different from fat fat is what you store in order to make atp so ATP is the true currency that you're using, and fat is your storage of that energy. The nucleus, I'm not going to say a whole lot about the nucleus. It has the nucleus of a nucleus is the nucleolus, and it has an envelope around it, and it's really the control center of the cell. It's where the DNA resides. Um, so. Any protein, for example, that needs to be made needs to have that code, and that code is living here in the nucleus. Another organelle is the Golgi apparatus, and this is often described as a stack of pancakes. It does look a bit like a stack of pancakes, but at the end of the pancakes here, it seems to have something dripping off it. So the Golgi apparatus is responsible for packaging things made inside the cell. So this is called a Golgi vesicle when some molecule, let's say a protein, is coming in here and is packaged and is released then inside a little vesicle. And it's going to be called a Golgi vesicle. But often thought of as the UPS plant, the one that's going to package it and send it somewhere else. Described as four to eight flattened bag-like structures that are stacked. And again, just it's the packaging plant of your cells. Lysosomes. I put the recycling sign up there because the lysosome is also a vesicle that's been packaged already by Golgi apparatus. But what it has inside is these toxins, essentially, that can break down substances within the cell. So it's the recycling plant. It's let's break this down into its component pieces, recycle what we can, and get rid of the rest. Okay? So these vesicles can actually sort of deploy their contents at oh, at a portion of the cell that's not functioning anymore, that's not working. 
And we can use that to break down those pieces that are left over and recycle them and use them somewhere else. So they're called often suicide packets. Um, a good example of this is when um, a white blood cell will englobe a bacteria. And it takes in a bacteria, and now what is it going to do with it? So it uses one of its lysosomes to nuke that bacteria, break it down, and then export the leftover pieces somewhere else. Okay, so they are responsible for breaking down stuff that you don't need anymore or, or unwanted. This is also important in program destruction. For example, when an embryo is developing, uh, we have webbed fingers and webbed toes. And even though you'd be great swimmers if that stayed on after you were born, we don't. It gets broken down. And how do you break down that little skin between the fingers? Well, lysosomes will migrate to that area and release their contents and therefore break down that tissue. And then you're born um, without that webbing between the toes and hands. We also have another detoxifier in the body, and those are called peroxisomes. Peroxisomes are also, they are produced by the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and they break down fatty acids. So once a fatty acid is no longer used in the body, it needs to be broken down, and that's done with peroxisomes. Let's see this clicker. An alcoholic would potentially have increased number of what in his or her cells, given that this individual consumes a lot of alcohol. Think about it, respond, and the answers are at the end of the lecture. I'm going to stop this now for this mini lecture and continue on in, a, in another section five. Thank you.